Hello, and welcome back to the innovation stage. We are very happy to have you here. We have another great presentation coming up right ahead of schedule here from Anshul. And Anshul, if you'll just go ahead and turn on your video and audio, you can take it away. Thanks so much for being here. Sure, thanks. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, it was, it's really nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm gonna just share my screen. And you should be able to see my screen just fine. Coming in loud and clear. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks for confirming that, Daniel. Um, so, hello, everyone. My name is Anshul Vikram Pandey. I'm the co founder and chief technology officer of Axer. Um, in today's uh, this brief uh, talk, I will talk, I will basically go over one of the key functionalities uh, and, and a very pressing problem. Uh, in the world of adaptive learning or models that have to evolve over time or ch change with data drift, concept drifts, and so on. So a brief background about Axon. Uh, we are a no-code AI company. We have been operating in the financial services space for the last six years now. We are a Forbes 30 under 30 uh, top 10 AI software and best data analysis tool awarded company. Um, recently, one of the uh, one of the best awards that's closest to my heart is uh, uh, top top companies in New York City to work for. So, so that's also uh, there, basically building the team uh, that is that's very very vision oriented and working towards making AI adoption easier for enterprises. Um, our approach towards enterprise AI adoption is, is a little different. We don't really start by building the most fundamental components that is needed uh, to do the A-B testing and the very basic AI model development. Uh, we basically take a very uh, top-down approach where we first go towards what the business use cases are, and then we build, uh, like the software can be built to, uh, can be used to build models around each one of those use cases. So our platform comes uh, preloaded with 400 plus um, use cases for financial services, spanning from asset management, private markets, asset, uh, uh, insurance, banking, and then by functions, workflows, users, and so on. So today's talk is about adaptive machine learning framework, um, which is how do you build models uh, that can adopt, adapt to changes, um, data drifts, concept drifts, uh, because end of the day, one model doesn't fit all. Uh, working with so many clients in the financial services space, we know that the same sentiment model that you're using for quantitative research is not going to be useful if you are doing credit risk analysis. Or if you are analyzing financial crimes, the same AI model cannot be used for doing things like KYC analysis. So, to make that happen, uh, let's first understand uh, like the premise behind uh, adaptive machine learning is uh, you have different needs in the enterprise and for dif different needs, you dif need different AI. The building blocks could be the same. There is, there's going to be some data layer in there. There's going to be some pre-processing components. There will be some delivery piece uh, or, or some basic uh, fundamental ML modeling components in there. but just the, even though the skeleton is the same, the, the meter that you put on top is going to be all different for different use cases. So uh, for different needs, we needed different AI. And that's where we build this framework that we call Axterns Adaptive Machine Learning Framework. But uh, just to take this, uh, understand this problem with an example. So let us say you have a document like this um, and enterprises have a bunch of financial documents, news chatters, uh, they are getting data from Edgar and, 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 and various sources. But let us say you have an example document like this, and you want to conduct sentiment analysis for a fundamental uh, research use case. Uh, for that, uh, you would basically, uh, so if you want to do fundamental research use case, quantitative research use case, and so on, uh, you will have to basically build different types of models. Now, traditionally, what companies would do is they would take the same model, apply on top of the text, and then you would get scores that are like pretty much useless for you because here you have scores that are essentially zero. And that is happening because there's no context in the model. Um, 
To bring in the context, what you really need is the ability to take the same sentiment model and then branch it out with additional insights, additional information uh, for, 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 for the different use cases. And that is where uh, we introduced this concept of adaptive learning. So the intuitive definition of adaptive learning is a technique that adapts AI models to newly acquired knowledge uh, by systematically applying those new learnings, which result in better predictions and more useful business processes. The mathematical definition you can find, this is one of my favorite books on causality. On the second page itself, it talks about how the conditional probability is dependent on the background information. So uh, the probability of some event happening or an article to be positive is only going to be, is, is going to be dependent on the context. So here K is the context or the background that we usually ignore and then we consider it to be consistent. And that's why you say probability of A given K is, 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 is probability of A. But that's where the gist of adaptive machine learning comes into picture because if you have your context is financial crimes or ESG analysis, you actually have a different background knowledge. You have a different context. You have a different K. And that's why your probabilities are going to be different. Your models are going to be different. Uh, just to put that, uh, that, dif that differentiation in, in, in this illustration. So in conventional batch learning method, you usually would train the model on some data you test and then you deploy the model live. Uh, there are additional approaches around nested uh, cross-validation. In adaptive learning, what you do is you basically uh, train the model, you test it, and as the time passes by, you keep uh, updating the model with additional data sets. Uh, we have a very nice blog post that's written by our VP of data science that you can uh, check out to see how adaptive learning really works from a very, very theoretical uh, point of view. Um, now, here you can actually think about adaptive learning, like how do you really adapt the model? So one way to adapt the model is you can set it based on some kind of a systematic signal. So you, you want to update the model every time the performance decay happens, every time the model changes by more than 5% or the decay happens by more than 10% or so on. Or you can adapt the model every time data drift happens, regime shift happens. Uh, or you could update the model every time you see that there are missing, missing data values in, in, in the new data set. Um, there are also ways in which you could bring in expert intervention, right? So you have your subject matter experts working in the team and you want to bring their knowledge into the model and, 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 and adapt it, you could also do that. So essentially adaptive learning, uh, you could do it in a very systematic manner using some kind of automated approaches, or you could also do it uh, via subject matter experts and manual intervention. Just to show you an example, uh, this is, I just took a screenshot from, a, from, a plat from the platform. Uh, this is the, the piece where experts can intervene. They could actually provide additional data for the model to get updated. So the same sentiment model, you have different versions for credit use case, um, and then you basically branch out the same model with additional insights uh, for ESG, for credit, and, and so on and so forth. So what we really provide is a base model that is already state of the art, but then you also we also give you the ability to fine tune that last 10% here and there. Um, does it really work, right? I mean, we are all data scientists. Uh, uh, it's, it's important to talk in numbers. So we have uh, conducted this very, very comprehensive benchmark uh, recently. Uh, it's under review, it will be published soon. But just to give you an idea, uh, so here XERN is, uh, this is basically a comparison of uh, sentiment model uh, offered by, by various, various cloud platforms. And um, the models here, so the XERN model here is an adaptive model for sentiment where we have fine tuned it over the last five, six years. And then you could see some of these numbers. So it will be published very soon and that will be open for, for a public review as well. But right now it is with some of, the, some of our collaborators at, uh, in the universities to basically uh, finalize the, the final version. But what you really end up seeing is that when you adapt the models based on, based on the background information or the context, you really get higher, higher performance values. But does two minute the, warning. 
So does that uh, performance really translate into business value? And I think that is where the gist really is. I mean, even though we want to build more AI models, end of the day, we also want the business to get value out of it. So uh, this is like one very interesting uh, uh, article that got published where uh, Next Alpha was using our model. Uh, this was all adaptive model. It was uh, uh, getting updated with the uh, as the concept drifts and data drifts are happening, and they 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 netted a significant return uh, in, in in the last one and a half years. There is another case study around smart lending. There is a credit lending firm that was using our models to update their underwriting methods. Uh, and um, they also went from 87% accuracy to 94% accuracy. So to wrap this talk, uh, I mean, do you really need to update your models with new knowledge over time? Uh, this is the litmus test that we talk about. We ask our clients, does your use case involve new knowledge acquired over time? So if you are doing systematic trading, there is new information coming in every day. If you are looking at credit risk evaluation, again, new, new information, coronavirus and, and, and so on, uh, kind of events appearing. Uh, if your model is going to get new information over time, that means the background knowledge will keep changing and then, uh, or the context will keep changing and that's where your single models will not really work. They will have to be updated and adjusted. And that's where you will have to use adaptive learning. With that, I will uh, pause and uh, open the floor for questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Anshul. It was a pleasure having you. Everyone else, go do some networking, check out our exhibitors, and thanks for joining.